everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber Rachel. I make new videos every single Wednesday about motherhood and lifestyle. And today's video is going to be why I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Bringing a new baby into the world is already so stressful enough, but for a lot of families, on top of that, they have to decide whether or not to put their child into daycare or to be a stay-at-home parent. My husband and I definitely struggled with this, and I wanted to share some reasons with you on what ultimately helped us decide for me to be a stay-at-home mom and to quit my job. And I do want to mention that I do understand that being a stay-at-home mom is not an option for a lot of families out there, and I do understand that putting your child in daycare or childcare is not an option for a lot of people. But I just wanted to share my experiences and why I decided to be a stay-at-home mom, so that way if anyone else was out there struggling on whether or not to be a stay-at-home parent, then they can hopefully help themselves come to a decision by watching my video and decide on whether or not they want to be a stay-at-home mom or dad. So let's go ahead and get right into the video. Before I had my daughter, I was actually a police officer. Just like any job, there are moments where I absolutely loved it and there are moments where I absolutely hated it. But at the end of the day, that was the career path that I chose and, you know, sometimes I do miss it. I'm definitely very lucky and very fortunate to be able to stay home with my daughter. At the end of the day, I would choose my daughter over my job a thousand times over. So yeah, I was a police officer and literally the day that I found out I was pregnant, when I was at work, I was involved in two different fights. So, yeah, two fights at work, and then I came home, I took a pregnancy test and saw that it was positive. You know, obviously my whole entire mindset about being a police officer kind of changed. But if you guys are interested in the full story of me finding out that I was pregnant, then I'll have that video linked up here above if you guys were interested in watching that. But clearly, as soon as I found out I was pregnant, I was taken off of the streets and I was put into an administrative position. So that kind of gave me the opportunity for the next several months to decide as to whether or not I wanted to stay in that profession or not. Being a police officer is such a dangerous job, but I know that for me, I would just always be constantly thinking, what if I died in the line of duty and my daughter wouldn't have me? So that played a major part into why I decided to quit my job as well. So kind of taking into consideration the dangers of the job in general, which again, I know what I signed up for. And like I said, there are moments where I loved it. But being a mom, I just feel like my perspective kind of changed. And I feel like that wasn't my priority anymore. My priority wasn't being in that career path anymore. And even if I did want to continue working, I still would have chosen a different career path just because I didn't want to put myself in any extra danger that I didn't have to. And the city that I worked in was extremely, extremely dangerous. Like, it was crazy. So I'm really glad that I'm not there anymore. Also for my job, at least for the state that I was working in, I had one year from the date that I resigned to keep my certification as a police officer. So I resigned in October of 2020, so that means that I had a full year up until the following October of 2021 to keep my certification and decide whether or not I did want to go back or not. So that just means that if my department would accept me back, or if any other city within our state would accept me as a police officer, then I wouldn't have to go back through the full academy. So knowing that I had a year to kind of decide whether or not I did actually want to be a stay-at-home mom or go back to the workforce really kind of helped me feel a little bit more comfortable with my decision because I knew that I had a year to kind of give being a stay-at-home mom a test run. But honestly, ever since I quit, there's just like a huge load of relief that has come off of me. And honestly, I'm so thankful that I don't have to deal with being a police officer anymore. So after kind of thinking about some things with my job, my husband and I, we needed to sit down and think about the financial aspect of things. So one day me and my husband just sat down and we wrote out all of our bills, all of our expenses for the month, every single thing that came out of our account monthly or that we needed to spend money on monthly. We just went down and listed it out. And when we did this, we made sure to overestimate. So let's say if we know that we spend usually like 50 bucks a month for gas, we would write down 75. If we knew that we spent 300 on groceries, we would write 500 down for groceries. Just so at the end of it, when we subtracted the amount from his paycheck to see if we had enough money for the month to actually get by, then we knew that we had some kind of cushion and some leeway. At the time, my husband did make way more than me. So then we kind of had to figure out whether or not we could still get by without my paychecks. So every two weeks, my paychecks were about 
13 or 1400 dollars and so monthly I was making about 2600 dollars and the average price for daycare in my area was around 1500 dollars a month so when you deduct the 15 from the 26 you're left with 1100 dollars so are we really going to depend on that 1100 dollars to survive and to get by but then we also had to take into consideration that if I were to quit my job and we did get rid of my paychecks completely, we still would be saving some money in some areas. Yes, I know we're adding a whole nother mouth to feed, but we also are going to be saving tons of money on eating out ourselves. It was really hard for me to pack my lunches for my job because I was working 12 hour shifts and that's a lot of food to pack. And honestly, I was just so tired when I would get home, I just didn't even bother with it. So a lot of the times I would always buy my lunches, buy my dinners, whatever when I was at work. My husband worked 12 hour shifts at the time as well, and so he would always buy his food for when he was at work. But if I were a stay at home mom, then I would have the opportunity to actually sit there and cook our meals. So that would cut down on a lot of the food that we would spend money on because I would be cooking the food instead of us going out buying meals. It also would be saving us money because I would not be spending as much on gas, traveling to and from work and to and from the daycare center. So luckily after sitting down and kind of listing out all of our monthly expenses and trying to figure out where we could save money in certain areas, we came to the decision that there was enough money for me to be able to quit my job. But even still, even though we did have that cushion, I do have to figure out how to cut costs in some areas and we do that. And luckily we still are able to maintain this lifestyle. Moving on, I wanted to talk more about the whole daycare aspect as well. You know, being a police officer, I saw so much bad happening. We had a home daycare in our city and there was a woman taking care of, you know, all the kids in her daycare, but she was actually abusing all the kids physically, and one of the children that was in her care actually passed away from the abuse, and, you know, you always hear stories and bad stuff happening, like in daycares and everything like that, so truthfully, I really wasn't comfortable with the idea of putting my child in daycare, and I know that it's not an option for families out there like some families they have to put their child in daycare and I'm not knocking it and not every daycare is like that not every daycare is bad or you know not all caregivers are bad that's definitely not what I'm saying at all it's just that after hearing those stories and seeing some of that stuff I just couldn't look past that that was just my own personal feelings and my own personal opinion and so I wasn't really comfortable with the idea of daycare and also as far as my family members go my grandmother is elderly and so I didn't really want to burden her with the task of you know watching my newborn watching my baby because having a newborn is a lot of hard work and my grandmother watched me and my siblings when we were little and so I figured that I wouldn't bother her with putting her through all of that again and also my mom is also a police officer she's a detective and so my mom worked all the time and so obviously she wasn't an option and all of my other family lived out of state so family was out of the question and honestly daycare was iffy so I did come across an article where it says that 60% of children benefit more when they have at least one parent at home but I really don't think that that's like a real thing if that makes sense like I don't think that you can accurately study that because every single child is different every single environment is different so I feel like you can't really say that for sure but at the same time if that is true then you know obviously I'd want to do that for my kid if I could but yeah like I said I, I don't I really don't think that you know if your parents are working that means that your child is doomed so I guess that's another thing that you want to take into consideration if you're also deciding on being a stay-at-home mom to think about the benefits that your child could have from that so like the article said that they have they benefit better whatever and that could be in the educational standpoint that could be in the overall mental health standpoint that could be in whatever kind of standpoint that you could be home to assist your child with and help them grow and benefit from and whether the article is true or not, you do still have the opportunity to stay at home and teach your kid your, on your own. So before they get to like the preschool age, then you can help them start learning stuff and you can teach them at your own pace. And you're also just there for them in general so that way you can help them grow as a person and be with them every single step of the way. So that's definitely another huge benefit of being a stay-at-home mom. My daughter's birthday is in September and so she misses a lot of the cutoffs for re kindergarten registration and so instead of her starting kindergarten at four about to turn five, she will be starting kindergarten at five about to be six which is typically when a lot of kids are starting the first grade when they're either five or six or five going on six. 
So something that I decided to do was to homeschool my daughter for kindergarten so that way she would kind of still be on track. And with being a stay-at-home mom, that's something that I actually have the opportunity to do. Which is not something that I have to do, it's not something that you have to do, it's just a personal preference of mine and that's something that I wanted to do. Just to make sure that my daughter was still kind of on track because she barely misses that cutoff and it's really kind of frustrating. So I still want her to have kindergarten when she's five and not start kindergarten at five and then literally two weeks later turn six and have to do her whole kindergarten as a six-year-old which again I'm not saying is a bad thing it's just a personal preference of mine because I don't want her to have to wait a whole extra year just because her birthday is like two weeks after the registration deadline and my daughter is about to turn one and I'm already thinking ahead just because like I am kind of excited and time is going by like so quick so I know that by the time she is ready to start kindergarten it's literally gonna be here before I know it so yes I'm already thinking like super far ahead Alright you guys, so that wraps up today's video on why I decided to be a stay-at-home mom. Hopefully by watching this video you were able to make a decision as to whether or not you want to be a stay-at-home mom. And if you guys have any other questions about being a stay-at-home mom, I am 100% transparent and will gladly answer them. So please leave them down in the comments below and I will make sure to answer them for you. I do make new videos every single Wednesday on motherhood and lifestyle, so please hit the subscribe button if you aren't subscribed already, and please give this video a big thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy, and I will see you guys next week.